And welcome back to another edition of the Total Sports Live podcast here on, I was about to say Anchor, but Spotify for Anchor, anywhere you can get your podcast. This is Total Sports Live podcast. This is Joe Vaughn. You already know how I'm joined by my guy Harrison. We're back at it again. The last time we was with you all, we were talking about those Philadelphia Phillies, getting you prepared for the season. Things started off a little rough for them. However, they are starting to rebound, so things are looking for the up and up for them, but we're going to switch gears, change topics, and talk about those Philadelphia Eagles because they have the NFL draft coming up, which is later this month in Kansas City. Eagles have the have two first round picks, uh, number ten and number thirty. So we decided on this week's pod that we're going to do a Eagles centric mock draft, not the whole first round mock draft, which everybody is doing. And they've been phenomenal from the ones I've seen, you know, the different just thought processes on how people see for different teams. We're going to take that same um, idea and take that and attach it to the Eagles since they have what six picks, I think six, seven picks. I think so. So six, seven picks and we're going to play this. We're going to essentially use this podcast as like our war room as me and Harrison are going to discuss what as if we were in the Eagles front office, if we were the GMs, system GMs, what would we be, what would we do in these certain spots? Will we take a player at 10? Will we trade back? What will we do at 30? Will we trade back again? A lot of cool things that we're going to do here on this pod. But before we get into the mock draft and, you know, discuss the picks that we're going to have and all that, et cetera, make sure you're following the podcast on Twitter at Total Sports Live. Make sure you're checking out the website, totalsportslive.com. Uh, Make sure you're checking out and subscribe to Harrison's newsletter, which is harrybrownrusso.substack.com. I think it's just Harrison Brown Russo. I just went with the oh, name. There you go. Yeah. Harrisonbrownrusso.substack.com. We'll eventually come up with an angle for it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that works. Harrison Brown Russo at dot substack.com. Make sure you're doing that. Make sure you're following Harrison also on uh, YouTube. Her- uh, Harrison Brown Russo on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button over there as well. Just dropped a new uh, draft video over there a couple of days ago. I peaked Vanter Sports talking about their uh, their clientele that they have over there. So make sure you check out that. Um, and then always, like I said, make sure you're following and subscribe to the podcast. Apple, Spotify, iHeart, anywhere you can get your podcast. Spotify for, you know, podcast anywhere you can get your podcast it's right there in that central location just go there hit the subscribe button leave a follow leave us a rating we really appreciate everyone that's been tuning in and that's been checking out the podcast over the over the last couple of weeks and last couple of months excited to be back at and do it again so let's talk mock draft but before we do that as always got to do a check in harrison how's it going we're closer to the draft, which is almost like your Super Bowl because you've been putting in a lot of uh, extensive hours on the draft work. But then we know it just all continues again with a fresh start at 2024 when it's over. It's feeling like the Super Bowl this year. I'm definitely in on the draft circle this year. Started up in the summer. So like you said, you know, that 2024 class is going to be here before we know it. Talking Caleb Williams and Drake May and Shadur Sanders, who I'm already high on. But listen, that's next year's podcast. Tonight we're talking Eagles. Like you said, a lot of draft picks starting out with 10 and 30 off the bat. A lot of conversation there. Who are they going to take at 10? Who are they going to take at 30? Having the luxury of two first round picks after the trade with the Saints last year. Definitely a tip of the cap to GM Howie Roseman. And like you said, going to war room it out tonight. Kind of look at different prospects and really looking forward, especially as we get later in that sixth, seventh round, looking at different Mm -hmm. guys that the Eagles could add. Because we know they've had some success there and even in the undrafted free agent realm. So this is going to be a fun one. I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. And, you know, for this exercise, we're going to be using a Pro Football Network's uh, mock draft simulator, probably one of the best mock draft simulators out here right now that you can, you know, not do mock drafts for a certain amount of rounds, but also for whatever specific team that you're a fan of. So if you want to do the whole thing, all seven rounds for every team, you could do that. You could do it for one round for all the teams, but you can also do team centric ones. So definitely excited to get um, to definitely get into it. So. We might as well get into it, right? Let's might jump well, right. into jump into the mock draft simulator here. We're going to do our seven rounds here. We're going to do our normal draft speed. We probably going to do fast, but then it probably would have just been just like <laughs> just running through. So we're not going to do that. We're going to take the Philadelphia Eagles, the Super Bowl 57 runners up. They have two first round picks for the second time in the last two years. Obviously, they moved up to get 
Jordan Davis in front of the Baltimore Ravens and then obviously use your second pick to move for A.J. Brown in the deal with the Tennessee Titans would then the Titans use to pick the draft Traylon Burke. So there's always a possibility that the Eagles could move on these first two picks in the first round. We'll see how it goes here as we're going to be doing it from our end. We're going to hit let's draft, let's do it. So we got C.J. Stroud, one, Bryce Young, two, Christian Gonzalez, three, Will Levis, Levis. four, Jalen Carter, five, Anthony Richardson to the Lions, Paris Johnson to the Raiders, B. John to the Falcons, and Miles Murphy to wow. the Chicago Bears. So, a lot going on in our uh, yeah. computer-generated mock draft. A ton going on. So Harrison, like if if you're the e- if you're the Eagles here, what? Well, first of all, before we jump to the Eagles, anything stand out to you from just how the mock has just fallen here? Obviously, like I said, Stroud, Young, Gonzo, number three. Levis Carter Richardson to the Lions and then Bijan to the uh, Atlanta Falcons. Haven't heard a lot of Lions on the quarterback buzz this year. A lot of people feel like Jared Goff is kind of their guy. So to see Richardson go there at six is a bit surprising. To see Levis at four is a bit surprising. Certainly not out of the possibility, but just kind of the the buzz around him right now is that he's falling, is is that his draft stock has kind of decreased and that. You know, Richardson is the guy above him. So, and then how about Bijan at eight to the Falcons? I mean, I'm not opposed to Bijan high. We'll talk about that, you know, I kind of as we go tonight. But to the Falcons with the success Tyler Algier had, Cordell Patterson is still under contract. Surprising to see. But, you know, I, I don't hate Paris Johnson at seven to the Raiders. I think that makes a lot of sense. Jalen Carter at five to the mm-hmm. Seahawks makes a lot of makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Gonzalez at three is high for my taste. Um, I actually have some corners above him, but I know there's a lot of buzz on him this year. So, but, yeah, that's an interesting uh, nine picks right there. Interesting way to, you know, to jump it off. And like we said, we are the Philadelphia Eagles, and we have a couple of trade offers here already lined up at number 10. Um, the Houston Texans want to give them get involved. They said, hey, give us 10 and 62. We'll give you 12, 65, and 73. And if you're Howie Roseman, right, if you're sitting here, you're saying it to yourself, do I move back? to get more draft capital because that's something that the Eagles do need. They do probably want to, if they don't see what they like, we might want to move back. So we do have that option from the Texans and we have the Jets. The Jets said, Hey, give us 10 and 62. We'll give you 13 and 42. That means you're moving up in day two. So we got those two trade offers on the table, but however, (laughs) there are some very good defensive players still sitting there. Will Anderson, Tyree Wilson, uh, Devin Witherspoon leading off, you know, at the top defensive players for an Eagles team that um, – for an Eagles team that they say here on Pro Football – on Pro Football uh, Network, cornerback, edge, safety, defensive tackle, linebacker. Obviously, we know the Eagles don't need corner because they re-signed, uh, they re-signed Bradbury and also extended Darius Slay. Um, edge safety defensive tackle. Obviously, they added ter- uh, Terrell Edmonds from the uh, from the Steelers, so they got that locked up. Could use some more linebacker depth. Obviously, some more work in the trenches on defensive tackle and edge. But yeah, this is where we're sitting at for the Eagles. What do they do? I- I'd be very surprised if Will Anderson is there at ten. I think we got right. a little bit of a funky uh, yeah we did draw here. We did. It, I mean, if he's at ten, it's a no brainer. Right. It's kind of how people feel about Jalen Carter, too. If Jalen Carter's there at 10 and there's a lot of off the field stuff with Carter compared to to Anderson, who's a little bit more of a a sure thing in terms of a top 10 pick. Carter has a little bit more question marks, but talent wise, I mean, those two are are, are just no brainers. Tyree Wilson certainly catches your eye as well. You know, assuming Will Anderson's not there um, when the Eagles are up with April 28th, Tyree Wilson would catch your eye. I'm a big Brian Branch fan. For the Eagles, I'm going to be putting out one of those first round mock drafts pretty soon. And Brian Branch is who I have the Eagles taking at 10. I think he fills a void that Chauncey, Chauncey Gardner Johnson leaves with him going to Detroit. Um, Gardner Johnson was a guy who you could line up at safety, line up in the slot, contribute in run support, contribute in zone coverage and deep halves. I think Brian Branch brings a lot of that. He can line up in the slot and play man mm-hmm. coverage against whoever their top slot receiver is. Really gives you a great counter to Avante Maddox. Also has the versatility to play a true safety position. And no matter where he's at, he can contribute in the run game. Really sound tackler. So that's where I'm going. But in terms of this mock draft, as we're sitting here, I mean, 
Will Anderson is, is a no-brainer. I say, do we take Will Anderson or do we move back a couple I spots? I feel a little, I feel that... a little uh, funky taking Will Anderson. I really don't think he's going to be there for the Eagles. I'd be shocked. Right, right, me either, right? But for the purpose of this exercise, all right, do we take Will Anderson at 10 or do we drop back a couple of spots? So in terms to, of those trades, if to, you want to, to, to recoup some more value, pull them back up. I didn't love the Houston one. It really seems like in that one, you're only getting 73 because you're swapping 62 for 65. Right. Yeah. You're just getting 73. I get you. You get the 12th pick compared to the 13th pick. But just in terms of the trade, I would prefer the Jets one um, dropping back three spots. You know, you might miss out on a player. But in terms of the compensation, I think that's the better trade. Or do we just go with Will Anderson and not overthink this? Hey man, I think if Will Anderson's there, they take him. So yeah, if you want to go Will Anderson? I'm good with it. Will Anderson off the board, number ten. Levin Bodrick Jones, Luca Van Ness, number twelve. Jackson Smith and Jigma to the Patriots. Jordan Addison to the Steelers. Devin Witherspoon to the Lions. Cam Smith, Cam Smith, love Joey that one. Porter off the board. Brian Branch to the Vikings. Zay Flowers to the Giants, which is really not horrible if you think about it i love that pick Nah, yeah just because they know that they need weapons yeah here and we do have another trade here at number 30 <laughs> the rams That's they said trade. hey give us 30 drop back you give us 36 we'll give you 36 to 69 and you just give us another you give us a little super late round right. pick to compensate that so we do have that trade um on the line, and then for players that are available right now, we do have the likes of Michael Mayer, Nolan Smith, Darnell White, Dewan Jones, Jamar Gibbs is also in this, also in here, uh, BJ Ojolari, Mozzie Smith. So there's some weapons there, but if you're the Eagles here, you're thinking about it, 30 is almost a luxury at this point because you got the defensive, we got the defensive player that we need on that edge and that linebacker spot to play and showing the size um defense there's names here i'm high on just in general i don't think the eagles will go offensive tackle i mean i know that's something that they've done in the past but darnell wright and dewan jones are two guys i'm extremely high on you've known that for a while jovan um i think they might be gone by this point and i'd be very surprised if the chiefs didn't take one with the next pick we took will anderson in this mock draft so nolan smith isn't the best pick but Nolan Smith makes a ton of sense at 30, and I really wouldn't even be surprised if the Eagles were considering him at 10 or if he's not available at 30. I think after his combine and also his body of work, this is a proven guy who's been a long-term contributor at Georgia, was a five-star recruit from IMG, proven winner, a guy that the scouts are going to love. It's easy to fall in love with what Nolan Smith brings to the table. I would honestly be surprised if he's there at 30. Um, Really for this one, Jameer Gibbs makes a lot of sense. It's something that I think the Eagles are going to have to consider at 30, taking a running back. The running back room right now isn't the best. You know, Kenneth Gainwell, Boston Scott, guys we all know and love um, here in this area. But Jameer Gibbs would certainly be a huge improvement. Just an absolutely elusive home run threat every time he touches the ball. Um, I see Trenton Simpson got drafted at 27 Mm -hmm. by the Bills. That's actually who I have lined up in my upcoming first round for the Eagles at 30. I think he'd be a great addition at linebacker, really versatile guy, can be a pass rusher or a true drop back outside linebacker. I think that's probably how I would assume the Eagles would use him. I really like Simpson, but in terms of this group, I'd probably go Jameer Gibbs in terms of what I'm seeing here. Nolan Smith would make sense if we hadn't drafted Will Anderson earlier, but in terms of who I would uh, recommend here, I'd probably go Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs. So we're not going to take the trade. We're going to get – our run, we're going to get our running back to lead the backfield because we're not so sure how Rashad, Rashad Penny will play on a one-year deal if he can stay healthy. We have two good, solid young backs behind him in Boston Scott and Kenneth Gainwell, but you can't when you have the speed and the playmaking ability of a J. Mar Gibbs, who a lot of people think is the second best running back in this class. Obviously, some people might even say that he's like 1B to you know the 1A and B, John. So instead of taking that Rams deal, sorry, Rams, we know you need the picks, but it's a decent trade. Yes, yeah, wait, a, yeah, it's totally, decent, yeah, totally, yeah, it's decent, totally trade. decent trade. But sorry, LA, we're going to take the running back. Here. Howie might take that if, if that yeah. was presented. Like oh, that's yeah. the type of deal that Howie takes all day. Oh you know? yeah, Howie and, like, definitely yeah. takes that deal completely because yeah. you get 
value you don't have to give up you're not really giving up much to move back right and, and then you add, get an additional right what day what's that day three that's a day three pick i think right or uh, what was it it was yeah 69 it's either day three or late day two it's a good pick yeah it's a top 70 good. pick yeah right. so you're getting two second round picks in addition yeah. to the second round pick that you already have so yeah so we're going to Take Jamar Gibbs here at 30. Gibbs is off the board. Dewan Jones, Jones. Yeah. Darnell. Yeah, Wright, I love that. I love those. Nolan right Smith there. to the Bengals. Michael Meyer to the Colts. Ojalari. Darnell Washington Darnell to the Washington. Panthers. Nice one. JL Skinner's a guy I'm a big fan of out of Boise State. Keon White as well. Patriots add a man with four, just continue to add to their to their secondary with another outstanding young corner. DJ Turner, who I think lit up the boards and the Cody 40s. Mock to the Cowboys makes a lot of sense. I could see that happening. Yeah, um, that's that's a does. Cowboys type of pick. Versatile offensive lineman. Offensive lineman that they yeah. need to get younger on that yep. offensive line. We have another trade here at 62. The Colts said, hey, drop out of 62. And we'll give you Shane Steichen, Jim Ursay, Chris Ballard are saying, give us 79. We'll give you 79, 106, 138 for 62. Got a stinking, Mr. Ursay. But it depends on what else is on the board here for us. That is the question. You know, all these coaching trades with the Colts and Eagles, they should just right. – you, know, you would assume that these would be two teams that would make a trade. Love Derek <laughs> Hall here, first name that really catches my eye. Like I said, we already took an Ed Russer, but mm-hmm. Derek Hall – Derek Hall might be a first-round pick this year. He's that caliber of player. And he's had a really good pre-draft process too. So we got him, we got Eli Ricks, we got Jordan Battle to safety here. Um, obviously, Andre Carter, if you're looking for an edge Carter. rusher, offensive tackling tackle Matthew Bergeron, who's a who's a solid tackle out of Syracuse this year. Um, yeah, some names, not nothing that stands out to us. So, do we move back to get more? Essentially, what are you thinking? For me, at this spot, I feel like we addressed our two big needs, right? We got our, obviously, the best defensive player in the draft. Just so happened he just fell to us. <laughs> and we got our running back in Jamar Gibbs, who's going to be our lead. Even though we don't have a lead back, he's going to be featured in the offense a ton with his playmaking and speed out of the backfield. Um, for us... It's all about let's get more draft capital. We're trying to get more capital, especially in those late rounds, because here at here in uh here at the Novacare complex, we love getting those late round picks and turning them into in the diamonds. So I think I, I think I think I want to trade back. Let's do I it. Think, let's trade back. So we're gonna take the offer. Thank you, Indy, for your Two service. Top 140 picks at the end of it, too. That is yeah. Yeah, you bulk up. We'll take we'll take the rounds. value there. I like the we'll, trade. We'll take the value. So Colts will take an edge in Tui and Tuli Tuli Tua Pulutu. Keanu Benton there. Keanu Benton was going to be the guy that I was going to lean there. We already got a defensive player in uh, Will Anderson, but Keanu Benton had a great senior bowl and just has outstanding tape overall from his time at Wisconsin. So we have another trade at 79. Everybody's willing and dealing here. So we have the Bucks said we'll give you 82 and a fourth next year. And then the Giants said, move back. We'll give you 89 and 128. Nah. <laughs> Can't do it with the division Can't rivals. Do. Can't right. do it. Tampa, nah. I don't love that one. I actually like don't the Giants one more just in terms of the capital. Right. Yeah. I don't love the, or the Buccaneers one. So we're in round three. Yeah. This would be round three. Yeah. Round three here. And right now, left on the board, we have Hendon Hooker to tight end Tucker Craft, who a lot of Eagles fans obviously love. Came Dallas from the same Goddard, school, yeah. Dallas Goddard. Um, we have Eli Ricks the corner. Obviously, uh, we say Edge uh, Andre Carter the Andre second. Carter a lot of people, eye. a lot of people who loved him, yeah. you know, during his season at Army and just the numbers he was able um, to put up to put up there. Um, obviously there's some more running backs Sean Tucker, Chase Brown. We have some quarterbacks here. We have some linebackers. We have Jair Brown from Yeah, you see my guy. Yeah, Jair Brown's a guy I'm a big fan of. McClendon Curtis at 126. So there are names, Isaiah Land, but obviously those guys might be 
later rounds here. So we so far have addressed a couple of our team needs so far here. So at 79, what should we do here? I, I also caught team. another name at the uh, the safety position. I mentioned Jair Brown, who's a guy I'm a big fan of. I have him slotted in at 28 in my first round mock draft. I know that's going to be higher than a lot of other people, but big fan of Jair Brown. I think that'll play out in the long run. I have him replacing Jesse Bates in Cincinnati. I, you know, I think in the third round, that's a great pick. Local guy, Trenton native, would be a guy who the Eagles fans could easily get behind. Another name that really catches my eye at safety, though, while we're here talking about it, is Jamie Robinson. A lot of what I was talking about with Brian Branch, you're getting some of those similar traits with Robinson. A guy who can absolutely cover the slot, I think will have success doing so in the next level, has that mm-hmm. versatility to play in the back end. So safety is a position that immediately catches my eye. I think it's a position of need. The Eagles lost Marcus Epps this year. Obviously, Gardner Johnson's a huge loss. A lot of Eagles fans really wanted him back. So that's something that catches my eye. You mentioned Tucker Craft. Tucker Craft's a guy who's high on my board at tight end. I, I like the way he plays football. I think he can do a lot of different things. A guy who wins up front has some unbelievable blocks, especially in those playoff games where he's lighting people up. And then really smooth route runner as well. I don't know if tight end is exactly where I'd go with this pick. Exactly. You know, I, I have a lot of trust in Dallas Goddard. And the Eagles also do a pretty good job of just bringing tight ends in in general. They usually Mm -hmm. find a way to, you know, get some contributions. Even back in the day, Trey Burton wasn't their top tight end for a long time. Goddard wasn't even their top tight end. Richard Rodgers had some success here. So I don't know if that's exactly where they would go. Then you think about Jack Stoll. We have Grant Grant Calfaterra, who we spent a late round pick on. So like you said, we don't really technically need – um, we technically don't need to go to the tight end position. Right. It'll be a great embarrassment of riches, but we don't necessarily need that. Like we've talked about, I'm not exactly sure Will Anderson is going to fall to 10. So in our mock draft, he did. So we won't take Andre Carter. But Andre Carter in this third round, second round even area, I think would be a home run for the Eagles, would be a great replacement for Brandon Graham whenever that time comes. Um, could really anchor that edge, give them a unique talent at the edge spot. You know, I think honestly how it played out for us, I think Jalen Carter is more likely to fall to 10 than Will Anderson probably is. If that was to be the case and they took Carter with one of these picks, I'd be a big fan. But looking forward to hearing what you have to say. I'm going to lean safety. I'm going to lean safety here. You know, I'm a big Jair Brown guy, so that's going to be my wreck. Can't go wrong with Robinson. Could even make the argument for Carter. But that that's going to be my wreck. Maybe we could look at all the prospects again, just do a quick – Scroll through, but I'm going to go Jair Brown here. See what yeah, you're Jair thinking. Brown. Obviously, like we said, Tucker Craft. So we're looking at safeties here. Tayshaun Boutte is another one that caught my yeah, eye. It's Kayshawn something to think Boutte. about. Yeah, We haven't but took again, a receiver yet. Right. We haven't took a wide receiver, but we might feel as if, looking at our board here, wide receiver, there still could be some guys that we could. There is. Tank Dell yeah, at 180, Tank 154. Dell. Is, I actually have Tank Dell above Tayshaun Boutte. I'm a big Tank Dell fan. I think Tank so, Dell is a playmaker next year in the NFL. So there could be some room there for us to go at wide receiver somewhere else. But like you said, safety might be the way to go. Because like you said, even though we did, we lost E.J. Gardner-Johnson. We lost Marcus Epps. We kind of addressed it a little bit. Obviously, we still have Kayvon Wallace here. We still have Reed Blankenship, obviously, who took steps in development as an undrafted free agent last year. Signed Tamrell Edmonds to win your deal. Also signed Justin Edmonds to win your deal. But there's not wrong with adding a little bit more depth to this equation, right? We look at a guy like Jair, like Jair Brown. We're talking about a guy last season, 74 total tackles, seven tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, four interceptions. The dude was pretty much all over the field last year. And it was the same thing in 2021, all over the field, 73 total tackles, six interceptions, a touch return for a touchdown, five pass deflections, doing it all on the field um, for for us. And then if if we want to take a step closer and look at Emory Hunt's fantastic uh, mock draft as we're doing our deliberations here, he has Jair Brown as his number three combo safety in the class. Um, He says his strengths, terrific twitch, and burst in all accelerations. It makes him a problem for any offense because he feels like he's everywhere which is what we need, right? If we're looking for that C.J. Gardner-Johnson replacement, we could get him in a Jair Brown. Excellent ball skills and ball awareness. 
does a great job of getting himself positioned, make game changing plays, shows up well if pressure off the edge, which I think Sean Desai would love to have a guy that they can just blitz off the edge there. Decisive player in one decision made is 100 miles per hour in that in that direction. Area of improvement, deep speed is a concern. More of a quicker than fast defender who would do sp- who would do find a split safety look or move a piece to a classic deep third guy and does get a little bit antsy and wants to jump things in front of him. Makes his footwork a little bit choppy in deeper zone. I'm not worried about that because I feel like we have a couple of good veterans that could help him and show him the way as well. So do we go Jair Brown, 5 for 11, 203 out of Penn State? Yeah, I'm good with it. Big, big fan of Jair Brown. I, you know, in my notes, instinctual flow with long range. That That's kind of how I look at him. You mentioned the stats in 2021, six interceptions, 10 interceptions these past two years. Big fan of Jair Brown. I think he'd be a nice piece, especially in this third round range. Nice piece as well. And like and like we said, Emory has him ranked as his number three safety combo. And he gave him a 76.5 scouting grade. Which would be great on the scale. Great on the scale, which means 79 to 70 would be solid NFL starter. And that's all we're looking for here in the third round. We're just looking for a guy that can just give us snaps, be productive. Hey, if he turns into a if he turns into a, a, a Pro Bowl player, we'll take it. So that's how I think of Brown as well. Like I mentioned to you, I, I have him at twenty eight in my upcoming mm-hmm. in Cincinnati. I know they just lost Jesse Bates. I think Jair Brown right. would come in and answer a lot of those questions in the deep half of their secondary. Hey, there's all lo- their losses are game. We're I taking like Jair, local guy too. Jair you always got to love that, and a Penn State guy. Just no, I, love, I love that pick. And the hooker to the I like Buccaneers. That a lot. Yeah, that's fun. That's a good very one. good one. Yeah. Receivers are flying off the board here. Tyler Devin Scott, Achain, Trey Palmer. Devin Achain to the Giants. We have a trade. Kayshawn Butte goes to Carolina. The Carolina. Talk about a guy really in Butte who he kind of fell off. Like his – from where he was before the season, then it just like draft stock just completely just – I don't want to say tanked. It just went down in a ridiculous – in ridiculous fashion. I've, I've always been a Jordan Addison guy coming off his year last year at Pitt, but Kayshawn Boutte was right in that kind of hype early in the year. Kayshawn Boutte was one of those top two or three receivers. I think maybe to some extent he got himself in some of that slide, some of the stuff off the field. And then also at one point he was committed to going back to LSU next year. I don't know if that exactly hurt his draft stock, but that is a surprising one. I, listen, Kayshawn Boutte, though, he does feel like a guy who's going to be one of these – third or fourth round picks that winds up starting for a team next year, making plays is going to be a fantasy waiver wire ad in week two or week three. It it feels Mm -hmm. like Butte will have some NFL success. He feels like one of those guys who had a really strong college career. His 2021 tape is definitely going to be the better tape than what he put on film this year. 100%. 100%. And that's kind of what a lot of the buzz was on him coming into this year, that he might be one of those top guys. But, yeah, that's how it played out for him. We're back on the clock here. We've got a trade offer from the Packers. Interested to see what you think here. 116, 149. We get a four for next year. So we're moving back from 94. I think we, again, we addressed the spots that we needed to address here. Not really a lot of players that went before us that were like, "Eh, I wish we would have grabbed them. I'm okay with moving back here. Again, we're getting extra draft capital because, again, we are about to sign Jalen Hurts to a big extension, yeah. which means we need rookie players on rookie deals that can be contributors. Not even if they can't be contributors this year, they gotta be contributors down the road. So yeah. I'm all for moving back and getting as much capital. And we get a fourth round pick for a Packers team that likely will maybe not yeah. have Aaron Rodgers and will probably lean into the Jordan Love era. I'm willing to take that chance to move back for some more capital. I like it as well. And coming off our trade earlier, I forget which team it was with, but coming off our trade earlier, we bulked up in that, you know, that 100. Yeah, the range. Colts, Daryl. So yeah, the Colts. The Colts. So we would have four picks, I believe, in that, you know, 100 to 149 range. I like the idea of that. You know, there's, there's a lot. These classes post COVID, you know, 2020 on have been really deep and really mm-hmm. strong. So many guys got extra years of eligibility. There's so many 60 year seniors that started 57 games and right. are three-time all-conference players that are going to be sitting in these later rounds. So I'm all for a deal like this. Let's move it in and accept this deal. We are moving back. Moved up for Andre Zach Carter Pickens. to the Chiefs. Bergeron to the Niners. 
Braden Daniels is someone Emery mentioned in their uh, mock yes, draft. Yes, he did. Miles Tucker, yeah. So the Saints, no, nah, we're okay. We're not moving back here. Hey, how about Tanner McKee to the Houston Texans at 104? Move on from Davis Mills and another Stanford to, quarterback. Transition over to Tanner McKee as your backup to, uh, I think they took Bryce Young. Bryce Young. Yeah. I don't think we're going to entertain this offer from the Saints. We'd have uh, a lot of picks in that yeah. 100. Yeah, we're, we have a bunch. We're, we're okay. we, can, we can hop back on the clock. Look at who's Left available. Left available here. We got an offensive. We got a, a camp. Luke Weipler, Jertavis Martin, Cameron Latu, Zach Kuntz, Sean Tucker. We have a linebacker, DeMarvin Overshone, DJ Johnson, Chase Brown, Darius, Darius Rush, Jonathan Mingo at wide receiver, who a lot Mingo's of Mingo's getting a lot of buzz. Yeah, he is starting to get a lot of buzz. We also have Jack uh Jacqueline Roy here from uh defensive tackle from LSU as an option as we try to continue to beef up. Obviously, we have Juan Gay Morris at offensive tackle as well. McClendon one. Curtis at offensive guard, Isaiah Land at 131, but more of a guy that probably we probably have to build up a little bit. I've been a big fan of Ken. We took Jameer Gibbs earlier, so we're not going to. But I've been a big fan of Kenny McIntosh since last year. I think he's 100% an NFL running back coming out of Georgia. I think he's got a lot of upside as a pass catcher. Like I mentioned, we took Gibbs. But that's the type of guy where if the Eagles go two defensive players in the mm-hmm. first round, that fourth or fifth round, man, Kenny McIntosh would be an awesome pick for the Eagles. 100%. So where do we go here? That is going to be the question. Looking around, there's some different guys. We can Jonathan Mingo is an interesting one for sure. Uh, he's got a lot of buzz. It feels like Mingo might be more of a second or third rounder right now. We're sitting here in the fourth round at 106. I don't know if Mingo will even be available. Let's scroll back up and, and look back at some of these names we saw at the higher parts of this list. See if we can look Jack here. Jack Roy. DJ Johnson, like I said, we landed DJ Anderson Johnson. earlier. DJ Johnson's a guy I became a big fan of. 6'4", 260, super stout player. NFL size and NFL power. Needs to kind of put it together a little bit more as a pass rusher. That's probably why he's sitting in these rounds. But also was playing tight end in 2021. Transitioned back to defensive end, outside linebacker this year. Had a career year. He's going to make an NFL team really happy. And then, like I mentioned, we took Gibbs earlier. But Chase Brown would be such a home run in this fourth or fifth round range. Really physical runner. Kind of fits the Eagles mold. I think he would be a really nice compliment to Penny and even Boston mm-hmm. Scott. They all kind of have that, you know, shorter, stout, just powerful punch of a runner. That's a really interesting one. And then how about Jaden Reed from Michigan State? A guy I've really been yeah. diving into recently. Um, in one of my YouTube videos, I got a lot of comments on Jaden Reed. I think four or five people were like, check out Jaden Reed. Really have been devoting some time to his game. Crisp route runner, really smooth route runner. A guy that we haven't taken a receiver yet, certainly someone to think about. So I just threw a few out, and I'm going to mention Darius Rush right now, the corner from South Carolina. South Carolina, I love Cam Smith. I, I believe Cam Smith is my first or second corner in my rankings. I'd have to pull him up, but Cam Smith is very high in my rankings. Um, and Darius Russ is another one. They've put out a lot of good corners over the past few years, dating back to J.C. Horn. So I threw a few out there. I'm sure I could pinpoint one. Let, let's hear what you think, and we'll kind of deliberate here. For me, a guy that's standing out to me, and this is just while we're while you're while you were talking, and I'm mm-hmm. researching at the same time. Demarvin Overshone, yes, is a guy that has that stands out to me a little bit. Of even obviously an outside linebacker, will position again. We the Eagles, we don't invest in linebackers. But with the exodus that we have had at linebacker, TJ Edwards, uh, Kazira White, we're a little thin at linebacker. Obviously, we still we have Nicobe Dean, we have Nicholas Morrow, but we need some more depth. And I think a, a guy like DeMarvin Overshone could be what we need to help in our linebacker unit. He's very and he's very good in acceleration all directions, pressures and pursues the ball rather well. He's a long, lengthy defender who can cloudy up passing windows of his length. And because he's a former DB, he understands how to go cloudy him up, which is always good. Got better every season, especially since making a move from DB to linebacker. And started to get a much better feel for the position. Um, areas of improvement, this is all from Emery's um, scouting guide here. Play strength really really have to improve, especially with regards to the point of attack. Has to be better at taking on blocks and disengaging from him, which he's going to have to be, especially in the NFC East. He's going to have to be able to get off those tackles, especially on the second level. Still plays a little bit past in that regard. Pat level gets a little bit too high when he's asked to rush from the edge. 
becomes a bit of a waist bender instead of having the natural bending of the edge to get around the offensive tackle. He has a 74.5 scouting grade. His player comp, his player comp, uh, his player comparison is, uh, is Alec Ogletree. Blade was in the senior bowl, first team all Big 12 conference in 2022, two time honorable mention, all Big 12 conference team, and had a really good last season here. Um, in Austin, 96 total tackles, 10 tackles for loss, four sacks, five pass deflections, 6'2", 220. I see him, obviously, sports sports reference has him at 6'4", 217. Some don't know where he's at, but option here for a linebacker in DeMarvin Overshone, just based off of what we're reading here, could be a guy that we might be considered if we don't go wide receiver here. I love the way he flies off the ball and blitzes. He's actually a guy I dug into his film this week. That was actually a guy that I sat down to watch this week. It's funny we're talking about him. He, <laughs> when I look at him, I the first thing I thought of when I looked at him was who are teams that blitz their linebackers and safeties a lot? Like Emory mentioned, transition from DB to linebacker kind of has that safety build. He almost looks like Jordan Battle a little bit when you look at him on the field. Mm-hmm. They have a similar frame. Jordan Battle is that bigger safety, looks like a linebacker a little bit, but plays safety. Flip it for Overshone. Overshone's a big linebacker who almost looks like a safety but plays that linebacker role. Love the way he flies off the ball. I think his highlight tape is literally uh, titled Missile, the Texas Missile. That's kind of how he flies off the ball when he blitzes. It's like a missile off the ball. Um, I I think he'd be a great pick. I think he would kind of help the Eagles move to Sean Desai as their defensive coordinator a little bit, move on from Jonathan Gannon. You get a linebacker who really flies off the ball and can be someone they utilize – on blitzes, on disguises, and also drop into coverage to pair with that, he'd be a very interesting pick for the Eagles and certainly someone at 106 that I'd be a fan if they took. So what do we do? Do we go wide receiver? Because we do have 10 more picks here. I'm not going to yes. lie to you. I'm, go- I'm good with Overshone. That that was a great note from you right there to, to bring him up. I think it's not exactly who the Eagles have prototypically taken at linebacker, but he does complement and give them something different to what they have because Nicholas Moreau, a guy I'm a big fan of, played with the Raiders for a long time, is more of that traditional outside linebacker, drop into coverage, really be a big run support guy. Overshone would be a game changer in terms of the pass rush and run blitzes. I'm a fan of it. It would move the defense forward to a new spot. So we're going to take DeMarvin Overshone. Welcome to the Philadelphia Eagles. I like it. Put him next to N'Kobe Dean. I'm a fan. Isaiah Land to the Patriots. Darius Rush off the board, Jalen Reed off the board to the Cowboys, which we don't like. So now we're at 116 here. 116, what do we do here? A lot of the guys we were a fan of just got took. We talked about yeah. Reed. We talked about DJ Johnson. I think uh, Darius Rush got took. Do we go a guy like McClendon Curtis That's here? That's a name that just caught my eye. They they lost Samuel Waller this year. Cam Jurgens is projected to slide in at guard, but – Clendon Curtis could provide competition, could provide depth at that offensive guard spot. That's a name that immediately catches my eye. Jamie Robinson's still there. Kenny McIntosh. We took guy, we took Jair Brown. We took Gibbs, but two guys that I'm a fan of as well. Wanya Morris catches my eye. Dontavian Wicks from Virginia is a guy that I think is going to have a lot of success in the NFL. Haven't taken a receiver yet. Our guy Ty J Spears is there. We took Gibbs earlier, but like I was mentioning in terms of McIntosh and Brown, I think Ty J Spears would be my favorite of all those running backs for the Eagles in terms of the late round guys. So there's some names here. Yes, there is. There definitely is some names here. So what do we do? Do we take best player? And we can't guys go best player available. Do we take a guy? Do we go take the McClendon Curtis here to shore up all offensive line? I'm good McClendon Curtis. I'm a big fan of his game. We got to build up the trenches here, so. He has tackle size, offensive guard experience. He's going to be an offensive guard in the NFL, but played some left tackle this year, really cleaned up the FCS competition, a physical guy. I think Jeff Stoutland is the perfect offensive line coach for McClendon Curtis. Take the traits that he has, mold him into an NFL starter in 2024, 2025. McClendon Curtis is a starter on the Eagles offensive line. I'm a big fan of that pick. I think that's actually a really realistic pick for the Eagles, too. It would not Mm -hmm. surprise me. If they went out and landed McClendon Curtis, maybe we're high on him right now. We're going off PFN's rankings a lot because we don't want to scroll through every single player and look at each player. Maybe McClendon Curtis falls to the Eagles. He's an FCS offensive lineman. Sometimes those guys fall. Maybe it is 
the fifth or sixth round. But at 116 here in the fourth round, I'm good going up sign. Heck, Cole Strange, uh, his teammate at Chattanooga, was a first-round pick for the Patriots last year. Yeah. So I don't think it's too high to go McClendon Curtis here by any means. Never, because as we see in the NFL, we always need um, we always need depth on the trenches. Yeah. So, yes. McClendon Curtis will be a Philadelphia Eagle. So we got McClendon Curtis out the way. Uh, Cameron Latu to the Jaguars. Jimmy Robinson, Chase Brown to the, to like the Chase Brown Ravens. to the Ravens. That's, that's Sean Tucker one. to the Chargers. Raleigh Moss, the fast corner out of Iowa. Jaron Reed to the to the Panthers. Kenny McIntosh to the Giants. Mingo to the Chiefs. Here at one thirty eight, starting to get a little bit, starting to get a little bit, little bit more interesting here. We're, if we hadn't taken Jameer Gibbs, Ty J Spears would be locked in here in the yes. fifth round. I honestly don't even hate it having taken Jameer Gibbs. I think Ty J Spears is that good. But for the sake of this, we'll keep moving. Michael Wilson's a guy who has a lot of buzz. I think Eagles fans will get a little scared. I, I see where you stopped right there. I'm good with it. 154, Tank Dell. <laughs> I have Tank Dell way higher than the fifth round. Our mock draft has played out this way. I was going to mention Duntavian Wicks, the guy who I talked about a few seconds ago. A guy who I really do think is going to have a lot of success in the NFL. I think people are going to be a little scared. I think he had four or five drops this year and a bit of a drop off in terms of production from what he put up in 2021. But Dentavian Wicks is definitely an NFL caliber receiver. We're here at the receivers. Got to shout out our guy, Andre Yosevas from Princeton. Track star speed, put up a good 40. It translates to the field really well. Sometimes 40s don't always translate. Yosevas is uh, 40 speed will translate to the field. A guy who I think fifth, sixth round is going to have success in the NFL. Charlie Jones is another guy that I'm a fan of and have high on my board. I think he's a really reliable receiver who can play a number of different spots. Probably he's going to wind up a slot guy, but a guy who can win from different positions. But I'm I'm locked and loaded on Tank Dell here. I think at one, 138, Tank Dell is a great pick. I think he'd push Quez Watkins, and the Eagles could eventually let Quez Watkins go and get a contract somewhere else. Tank Dell takes over. I'm good, Tank Dell, if you are. I'm good with Tank Dell. He is Emory's 18th ranked slot receiver, the five foot eight receiver, Tank Dell. Don, there you go. Wicks yeah. off the board. To Wicks Cleveland. is going to be a good NFL receiver. Wange Morris off the board. Brenton Cox Jr. Tajay Spirits to the. I love that. To the Bears, we have I a trade offer fit. here. Rams said, "Hey, give us 149." You could take 167 and 191 away if you want. <laughs> I'm good at 149. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good at 149. So left here on the board, we have Trey Dean. We have Eric Gray. We have Mike, Mike Morris. Mike Morris at 147 really catches my eye. KJ Henry. Um, Keytrail Clark was a good one. Chandler Zavala. A lot of people are big fans of him. He's a physical offensive guard. Had a good performance at the Shrine Garrett Bowl. Williams, Rajon Wright. Rajon Wright's the guy I'm a big fan of at corner. I'm, I, when we start talking about Christian Gonzalez, we saw him go three. I'm a big fan of Christian Gonzalez. A lot of the things that people are fans of Christian Gonzalez about, you can get from Rajon Wright in the fifth or sixth round. Get a mm -hmm. long, rangy corner. He gives me a lot of Tariq Woolen vibes. Not even necessarily in how they play. Just in terms of a guy who's going to be there in the fourth or fifth round and can be an NFL caliber starting player next year. Rajon Wright's a guy that I've been a big fan of. Um, we can go back up. Mike Morris from Michigan. We would add to the Will Anderson edge production. Mike Morris is a Philadelphia Eagles type of player. Um, honestly, reminds me a lot of Brandon Graham, another Michigan alum. They're physical players. Big, physical, strong with their hands. Don't let offensive linemen get inside their pads. So that's the two that I'm going to lean right now. Mike Morris and Rajon Wright, two guys that I'm really big fans of. This would be our last pick in the draft, too, as I just really? saw. This is our last pick here in this fifth round. So if we're going with this is our last pick, I think corner might be a little bit more of a need considering we landed Will Anderson earlier and considering all the hypotheticals where if it is Jalen Carter, we might have won Andre Carter earlier, Derek Hall earlier. I think we would have wound up with an edge rusher no matter what. So I think corner is probably the position of more need, having not taken one yet, and having Slay and Bradbury, who are relatively older corners. So we will probably go Rajon right here. Anybody not catching me. your eye that you like here? Anybody? Uh, DTR obviously stands Dorian out. Thompson. We're big fans of Dorian Thompson Robinson. Big fans of DTR here, but again, 
if we move back, can we can we get both our corner and our quarterback here at the end? That's the question. That's something to think about. I did not know that was our last pick. Maybe we should reconsider this more and take two more players, add to a little bit more of the analysis here tonight, too. I'm not, I'm not opposed. Hmm. This is tough. I don't see I, I don't see Ray John going off the board. I think you're right. right there. I don't think you know that's a big part of it. Board. NFL teams do this same type of thing. They have guys rated higher, but they know they can wait. You right. Know, I, you know, we talked about a few of these guys where I'm like, yeah, I have him way higher on my board. He fell to us Once, at whatever. 171, 170, 176 for right. Maybe we do just wait. Let's try him. Let's see. Let's see. And worst comes to worst, we'll find some other guys to look at. I'm sure there will be. City. So DTR, DTR goes yeah. to the Niners. Like Jarrett Patterson a lot. He had buzz last year. Morris to the Bucks. Trey Dean like for the Bucks. Roshan Johnson, another running back to the Giants to yep. keep loading it up. Yeah. So we Let's do see where we're at here. 167. So we do get, we are still able to get Rajon. Will he fall to our next pick? Are we willing to, to push it? Is there anybody else we like here in front of him? Jaquarian Bennett's another guy. I mean, I like Rajon right more, but Jaquarian Bennett has a lot of buzz from Maryland. Um, This is tough. This is really tough. Juice Scruggs, center out of Penn State, getting a lot of buzz. The Eagles have their center of the future. Don't know that they would go that way, but Juice Scruggs is an NFL center. In the next few years, I'm good. Rajon right here. I have no problem going Rajon right. Yeah, at this point, at this point here in the draft, we're just looking for we're looking for upside. We're looking guys that we can develop and hopefully they turn into something. That's long rangey corner can sit behind Slay and Bradbury. Not a guy who's going to play the slot. Um, I mentioned Brian Branch as someone that I'd love early in the draft to kind of play opposite in the slot to Maddox, but Rajon Wright could really develop one of those longer rangier guys. Like I mentioned, a lot of the qualities that people love. And Christian Gonzalez, sit, wait. You know, if Christian Gonzalez doesn't wind up being there, Rajon Wright is a similar type of long rangey corner. So let's go here with Rajon Wright, the brother Nashawn, who plays for yep. the Cowboys. Yep. Nice sibling rivalry there. So Rajon Wright's an Eagle. Rakeem Jarrett's off the board to the Colts. Eric Gray. So the Giants just keep loading up on running backs for some re- for some weird reason. They're just having a free for all here. Max Duggan. Yeah, that's a good one. They got Hooker Charlie, earlier in this. Hendon Hooker, the Patriots, the going to Andre Yosevas. I like it. I could see that. That'd be a good fit, actually. Replacing Jacoby Myers a little bit. Actually, like one ninety one ninety one. Last one. Again, we're going for upside here. That's all yeah. we're going straight upside. So, oops, straight upside. Dorian Williams, Ronnie Bell, Dante Stills, the defensive tackle out of West Virginia, Deuce Vaughn, Keaton Mitchell. Keaton Mitchell caught my eye. Jaden Hasselwood. Did we take a wide receiver? Yes, we did. We took Tank Dell. We took Tank Dell. Let's scroll a little more, and then I'm going to mention Will Mallory off the bat, who's the top-rated prospect in general, tight end for Miami. I think he's underrated right now. I think this is a really strong tight end class. Obviously, people mm-hmm. have talked about it. We saw it in how free agency wound up playing out for the tight ends. But Will Mallory is going to get kind of lost in the mix here, kind of slide to one of these later rounds. But I'm a fan of Will Mallory. Malik Cunningham to be the backup to Jalen Hurts. The Eagles don't exactly have their long-term backup figured out. Obviously, Mariota's here for right now. Malik Cunningham, one of the most dynamic quarterbacks in this class, can win with his legs. Made a lot of really challenging throws at Louisville. I don't think that's something people give him enough credit for. A lot of opposite hash throws, tough, tight window throws over the middle of the field, and then has the arm to make his deep shots as well. Develop behind Jalen, work with the offense, work with Brian Johnson, a really good quarterback coach, polish up those mechanics, become a next-level quarterback. There's some names here for sure. What's What are some names that are catching your eye? Uh, for me, them guys, obviously Kamari Everett. I know a lot of people, you know, you're talking about upside player, yep. like he's upside with his tools. Obviously, Mark Evans, another outstanding HBCU offensive lineman uh, from Pine Bluffs that, you know, his name stands, his name. Um, 
stands out to me. Everybody else, there's at that point, we're getting into guys that we could probably pick up on the UDFA free agent round. Brand, that's kind of what I was thinking. So the um, question is Mofi from uh, Antonio Mofi from UCLA. We took McClendon Curtis earlier. Mofi crushes people off the ball. He's a physical guy. I made a un- underrated uh, offensive lineman video earlier this month, and Mofi was mm-hmm. right on that verge uh, of being in that video. I'm a big fan of him. Um, I would love the Malik Cunningham pick. That's a guy that I've been high on for a while now and, and could be the backup to Jalen. And um, like we mentioned, Will Mallory, and you mentioned Kamari Averett. Kamari Averett is one of my favorite FCS prospects this year. I, I think that's a guy with a lot of buzz coming out of Bethune-Cookman as well. So we take Malik to I'm wrap probably, it up. Yeah, I'm with Malik. I love that to wrap it up. Malik to wrap it up. Ronnie Bell off the board. Let's see Hunter Lupke off yep. the board. Thomas Inkum is a guy with a lot of buzz out of Central Michigan. Dante Stills Dante had a Stills. good week at the uh, the Shrine Bowl. Ibrahim, oh, Ibrahim, yeah. Cameron Peoples, Tommy DeVito staying in Jersey. I like that going to the Giants. Terrell Deuce Smith Vaughan. is a guy I like. I got a Minnesota. Shaka Hayward really finishes his tackles really well, and there goes Mophie to the Colts. Jay Kaner, yeah. Brenton Strange. I heard Brenton Strange is a second or third round pick this year. I heard there's a lot of buzz on him. Yeah. Kamari Everett's off the board to the Steelers. Aiden O'Connell. Dwayne McBride from UAB had an outstanding career there for the Blazers. Carl Brooks is a good pick late in the draft. Tyson Bagnett. He gets a shot. Kamari Connor. Evan Hall. Avery Young, and these are our results from our draft. We should have a few, yeah. And we have a fourth. So the draft goes as followed here. Obviously, things were a little bit out of whack, but that was out of our control. We did not, we did not pick it that way. But we have Will Anderson, Jamar Gibbs, Jair Brown, Demarvian Overshone, McClendon Curtis, Tank Dell, Rajon Wright, Malik Cunningham. And we picked up an additional fourth round pick for next year for the Packers. Harrison, before we wrap up this, uh, wrap up the podcast, just your thoughts on our overall draft class. I'm biased because we just did it, but I actually really like it. I think it's a pretty well rounded class. I don't think it's overly populated at one position or one side of the ball. I think the Eagles would add a lot of different players here, a lot of different type of playmakers and guys that overall I, I could really see them picking. I think Jair Brown is a guy who the Eagles could add. McClendon Curtis could be an Eagle. Tank Dell would be, like I said, a great guy to push Quez Watkins, potentially mm-hmm. place Quez Watkins at some point. Um, I'd be a big fan of this draft class. Would love if they had a grade. I know some services grade some of your mocks. We're not going to get a grade yeah. here, which is all right. They might not love some of our picks. You know, McClendon Curtis could be a tad high. Um, Malik Cunningham late might not be their, their favorite. Rajon Wright is a guy that I'm a big fan of at 167. I think that's a really good upside pick. Malik Cunningham, really good upside. Um, really overshone on. It, it's really a lot of upside um, in, in these types of picks. And that's what we were kind of looking for, right? Guys that, that might not need to be impact players right now, but if we develop in the correct way, we can get something. And I think we came into this draft, what, with six picks? Wound up think. with ten. Yeah, we so moved we, around. So we winded up with eight, I think. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight picks and a pick for next year. So, and that's not even including the comp picks that we might get for next year with everybody leaving this offseason. Yeah. So, pretty solid draft class. We'll obviously see how it all pans out in real time later this month, which should be very fun to see. Obviously, like we said, the Eagles are known to move around, they are move, known to move up too if they also see the opportunity available to them. So, <coughs> we'll see what High Roseman and company do with. Uh, on draft night, obviously, like we said, there are going to be some movement. There's, <clears throat> they're going to be looking for people to come in and just to fill the void that they need to fill, especially on the defense, right? Offense is pretty much set, but defense, I think, definitely, I think it's going to be, a, I think there's going to be a more defensive heavy draft for this team as they look to stockpile, like almost how they did on offense, right? Just keep on replenishing with offensive talent, young players, young players. I think we're going to see the same thing on defense now as they get prepared for, you know, life after Fletcher Cox, life 
after Brandon Graham, you know, slay, like you said, slay and Bradbury are still, but they're going to get older too. So you have to eventually start replenishing and adding new guys to the table. So can't wait to see how it all pans out uh, later this month in Kansas City. I would definitely agree. I think that defense is the way that the Eagles will kind of bail it. I think that's what they've done historically. A lot of their classes are defensive heavy. But like you said, can't wait to see the way it plays out. You know, it would be fun to see any of these guys wind up as future Eagles. That, that would kind of be fun to see. You know, hey, we were on to something there. Like, they, they did like McClendon Curtis. He did kind of fit their mold. Um, like I mentioned a few times throughout the night, in my mock draft coming up, I have the Eagles taking Brian Branch at 10 and then Trenton Simpson at 30. That would really be that defensive mindset, like you said, really Mm -hmm. building up the defense, the way they want to go. I think it would fill a few voids. Um, I think that could be the way it plays out. The way it played out for us tonight, Will Anderson fell to 10, Jameer Gibbs to 30. I don't have either guy there at at those respective picks. I have Will Anderson at three, and I don't exactly remember where I put Jameer Gibbs, but I think it's Buffalo at 27 to to kind of fill that void. They didn't wind up getting Bijan. I have Bijan going at nine to the Bears. So a lot of different ways the draft can play out. We see it every year. This is kind of the way that it played out for us tonight with this simulation. A lot of fun. This was a really fun exercise and just a way to talk about a bunch. We might have mentioned 80, 90 prospects tonight in total. <laughs> just Even right. if it was just a quick little one second. Oh, I like Keanu Benton. He, he had a great senior bowler. Zach Charbonnet, a really big physical runner out of UCLA. I mean, we could go all night. So th- this was a lot of fun. Definitely a lot of fun. So that's going to wrap up this week's edition of the podcast. Again, really appreciate everybody that tuned in. We'll be checking out the pod as always. Make sure you're following us on Twitter at Total Sports Live. Check out totalsportslive.com. Make sure you subscribe to Harrison's newsletter, harrisonbrownrusso.substack.com. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube page as well. As well, Harrison Brown Russo on YouTube. Hit that good old subscribe button over there too. And make sure you're following the podcast on all your streaming platforms right now. TSL Total Sports Live Podcast. So that's going to wrap up this week. Next week, we'll probably be diving into some USFL as their season is going to get underway. A lot of great USFL talk that we're going to be talking about this season on the pod. So looking forward to doing that, you know, breaking it down almost how we almost did in the AFL. So, hey, you never hey. know. It should be should be fun. One. It should be very fun to talk some USFL and get in the season with their season starting next weekend in their, in their respective hub cities. So for me and Harrison, everyone have a good one, and we will talk to you all very soon.